So it's almost spring, it's 2024. You're thinking about getting pre-approved. You're in the right place. I want to talk today about what it's like to get a pre-approval from a loan officer this year and what you need to be looking out for. So um, my name is Scott Hastings. I work with home buyers every day in the trenches. And what, a lot of what you read online, see on YouTube is not necessarily true. So I want to talk to you about how we do it with my team and uh, what you should be looking out for. So I guess the first thing is why do you want to get pre-approved? And what's the difference between a pre-approval and a pre-qualification? Well, a pre-qualification is something you might get online, um, you know, from an online lender. I won't name any names. I don't know if I can get sued for talking badly about them. But anyway, um, that's where they just run your credit. They go after what you told them as far as what you make. And then they just issue a letter and tell you to go out and shop for a house. The problem is I see a lot of loans where this happens and it's not until it gets into the underwriting department and that's once you have a house under contract that the problems arise. And you've probably heard horror stories about how people get uh, denied, you know, the day before closing, for example. Well, that's how that happens. These things should have been found out in the very beginning and that's what you want to do before you put any money at stake especially um, during this time of high inflation where you don't really have money to spare. So <clears throat> what you want to do is find a loan officer, preferably a mortgage broker like myself. Um, a mortgage broker is somebody that can shop multiple investors to find the best deal and not just the best deal, but they might be able to find investors that fit your particular profile. You might have something like a credit score that's a little low or a different way of looking at income that you need. Um, and a mortgage broker can find an investor, if one exists, <laughs> to fit that uh, criteria. So, number one, you're going to fill out an application. In the application, you're just, it just goes really to the loan officer that you're working with. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but make it as perfect as you can. What you want to put in, of course, is all your basic information, your social security number, your um, date of birth, your address. It's important to put how long you've lived there. If it's been less than two years, you need to make sure and put uh, where you lived uh, during that whole two year period. Um, if you've been renting, it's important to put how much your rent is. If you've been living rent free, in other words, you live with parents or you don't have any rent, it's important to say that. And you may have to document, you know, what your uh, rent-free situation was. You might have to get a letter um, from, you know, your parents or whoever uh, you're living with to document that you have been living rent-free. And all these things matter, right, um, when it comes to getting approved for a mortgage, especially if your credit score is a little low or you, need, you don't make quite as much money as you, you know, might need to make. Um, it's very important, of course, with your credit score. And a thing to remember is the only things that matter on your credit report, of course, is your payment history, but also what are the minimum payments? So your car payment, of course, is what it is. Um, but your credit card payments, a lot of times people will say to me, well, I have one credit card. It's got a $3,000 balance. It doesn't matter really what the balance is. It matters what the payment is. So it's going to, we're going to look at what is your minimum payment on your credit card. Very important is student loans. So student loans in general, um, if you have a payment reporting on your credit report, then that's what we can use. But if you don't, then in general, we're going to have to use half a percent of your total uh, student loan balance as a minimum payment, even if you don't have one. So I won't get into the weeds on that, but it's very important to keep that in mind. Um, it's very important how you're paid. So if you're a salaried worker, you just get a salary. Let's say you make $100,000 a year. That's very straightforward. But if you're a hourly worker, for example, it matters how long you've been working there. It matters what your average hours per week are. It matters if you're guaranteed 40 hours a week. Um, if not, 
there has to be an average over how long you've worked there and how many hours a week you've worked. It's very important whether you make overtime or bonus or commission because you have to be on the job long enough for that to count in your income. You know, the next thing uh, <clears throat> we talked about credit, we talked about income. Uh, the next thing is your, your assets. You know, you can actually uh, get into a house with no money out of pocket. There are down payment assistance programs. Now, <clears throat> it matters what your credit score is, though. For instance, most down payment assistance programs um, require at least a 640 credit score. You know, as a broker, I have some that go down to 620. I was talking to an associate last week and said there's one out that now there's actually a 580. I don't know the details on that one yet. But you, um, it, that's what we're looking at. And as far as assets, uh, if you have assets, let's say that you have good credit, you're a first time home buyer, which means you could put only 3% down. It's really better if you have the 3% to put it down. It's a better deal. You're in general going to get a better interest rate and better terms. If you don't have the 3% and you qualify, then there are, like I talked about, down payment assistance programs where it's a great deal because you can actually get into a house. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to. So there are um, programs like that out there. You also can get uh, a gift. So many borrowers will get a gift from a family member for the down payment of, say, 3%. Um, if it's an FHA loan, it's 3.5%. If, if you're a veteran, then, of course, there is no down payment. You can get 100% financing. Um, but, you know, it's important to say in the application if, uh, you know, or, or tell your loan officer if you can get a gift. Super important. Um, what happens next in the pre-approval process is we're going to want to get all your documentation. So we need to verify, of course, your uh, income source. We'll have to get paycheck stubs, the most recent month's worth of paycheck stubs. We'll need to get the most recent two months of bank statements. Um, we may need two years of tax returns, depending on what, uh, really how you're paid. And if you're self-employed, absolutely have to get two years of tax returns. And it is super important to be talking to somebody who knows what they're doing because it's very complicated with self-employed income and you can get screwed up quick. Um, but basically, you want to make sure and upload all that documentation into the loan portal, you know, the online system where you're filling out your application. And then what we do is we look it all over. We will run it through the operating system make sure it's approvable, and then, um, you know, if necessary, we'll submit it directly into underwriting. So the underwriter reviews everything and gives you an actual pre-approval. In other words, it doesn't mean that you don't have to do anything else when you get a home under contract, but it means that you will be approved as long as nothing changes. So these are the things you want to be looking at for a pre-approval um, in 2024. What I've been noticing is that sellers and listing agents are asking more questions than they ever have because inventory is low. They want to make sure that it's a real pre-approval and that I or whoever your loan officer is, has actually looked at your documents to make sure that all this stuff is um, verified. So if you have any questions, I hope you found this video helpful. You can put uh, your questions in the comments section below. You can reach out to me on my website, mortgagesbyscott.com. Please click like and subscribe if you like this. That really helps me out a lot. And um, if you watch this whole thing, I'm standing here. My wife and I live on a uh, horse property. We have equestrian, uh, we have dressage horses. So that's why I'm standing outside. And we have some chickens and mini donkeys. So if you'd like to see pictures of those, let me know. I can post some of that too. Thanks.